Hey everyone, today we're going to continue on our series of videos discussing the different treatment options that are available for kidney stones. And today's topic of conversation is shockwave lithotripsy or SWL. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the treatment details to get you familiar with what this procedure actually entails. We'll talk about some of the different criteria for selection and eligibility based on the American Urological Association's handbook. And we'll also take a look at the success rate of this procedure to determine whether or not it is something that you should be investigating for your kidney stone. So let's jump into this. So in terms of this procedure, it is just exactly what it sounds like. Shockwave lithotripsy, literally, they are using shockwaves to break apart your kidney stones. And this particular treatment option has been around since the early 1980s. And since that period of time, over the last 40 years, it has really become one of the most popular options because it is non-invasive, so there's no surgical aspect to it. You do not need to be cut open and there's nothing going inside your body. Plus, there's no need for anesthesia. And this particular concern with regards to anesthesia really has become more prevalent recently because of COVID. And studies have shown that intubation that is required when you have general anesthesia increases your risk for COVID transmission. So a lot of people are looking to avoid general anesthesia these days due to COVID. So stack one up in favor of shockwave lithotripsy. Now, we've talked about ki kidney stone density before in a couple of videos, and we will link a card to that. But with this particular procedure, this is really only effective for moderate to weak density kidney stones. And based on pooled analysis, all the studies that are out there, a Hounsfield unit is the unit of density that you're obtained from a CT scan and is what is used to determine eligibility. And for most centers, and the average, again, of that pooled analysis, if it's less than 850 HU or Hounsfield units, it is generally deemed eligible for shockwave lithotripsy. Now, there will be some doctors and some urologists and some centers out there that will bump up all the way up to 1,000. They say, nope, we can get it done. We know what we're doing. 1,000 HU and under, we got it. And then there are other centers that will go down and say, nope, if it's over 650 HU, we are looking for other options. So there's a wide degree of variability here. But again, pool of analysis, 850 HU is what you're looking for and under. Now, this particular procedure is pricey. So it's on average in the US right now with insurance is $12,000. And let's just pause there for a second because likely when you get to this point here or maybe you're there right now, you're in the ER and you've been administered pain meds hopefully, maybe some other types of medications, you've likely had some imaging done, talked to a whole host of different doctors, and that bill is going up fast. Most people walk out of the ER when they go in for a kidney stone with about a $10,000 bill. And now we're looking at tacking on another $12,000 to this in order to address it. So things can add up fast, and it's something we're gonna talk about a little bit later in this video, but it's something you wanna keep in mind. And then lastly, one thing that people forget, because this is generally, it's concluded, it's, it's surgical procedure, but it's not really a surgical procedure. But even though your stones are being destroyed or blasted, there is a wide range of what that means. Some really weak density kidney stones could be pulverized to uh, particles and sand and that you will pass that without even feeling it. But as you go up in density and you start bumping up against this 850 or 1000, you're likely going to pass larger fragments or gravel as it's called uh, in the profession. And this is exactly like just passing kidney stones, albeit smaller stones than the original stone, but you're still passing kidney stones and it's still not fun. It hurts, you're dealing with renal colic and having to urinate frequently and it's just a whole host of things. So that is why shockwave lithotripsy is oftentimes combined with expulsive therapy. And Expulsive therapy is your choice. You can either go the medical expulsive route, which involves pharmaceuticals and the litany of side effects that are associated with that, or you can go down the natural expulsive path with a product such as Cleanse and avoid all those negative side effects and still get the same results. The choice is yours. Now, when it comes to patient selection, 
And I mentioned that this procedure was one of the most popular procedures for a very long time. However, that is changing because the patient selection criteria is pretty complicated and the actual procedure itself, um, it's finicky. Results vary pretty widely from center to center and it's not easy to obtain consistent results. So that coupled with all the things that a urologist has to factor in when evaluating eligibility for shockwave lithotripsy has decreased its popularity. And I think that as we go through this, you'll get an appreciation for this. So first and foremost, before we determine if shockwave lithotripsy is even eligible for an individual, we must have a non-contrast CT scan completed. Now, I wanna note here that if you have a CT scan available from a previous stone within the last year, this is usable information for your urologist or your doctor. There should not be a need to rescan, again, due to radiation concerns with certain X-ray and CT imaging modalities. And we've had a video on this and we will link a card up here and we'll talk about it in more detail, but limiting radiation is important. So if you have a previous CT scan, they can use it. If you don't, you're gonna get a CT scan because they need to understand a number of different factors. And those factors include stone size, stone diameter at maximum, stone volume is also taken into account. We're looking at density information, where the stone is located, in the kidney, is it in the ureter, are there other complications present? And then they're also taking a look at anatomical features, like does your body have anything that's you know, different or abnormal that could potentially get in the way of this procedure. So they are evaluating all those different aspects. So a CT scan is not always necessary, but we do need the density information from a previous scan if you have it. So if they decide you've got a kidney stone that is less than 850 units, now we start going into the gauntlet of the selection criteria. So it is generally accepted that if you have a kidney stone that is less than 10 millimeters, the American Neurological Association recommends expulsive therapy to be tried for a six week period. Now, American Neurological Association recommends six weeks. Most of the other urological associations uh, around the world, including the European Urology Association, they don't have a stipulation on the time frame. So if you are using expulsive therapy and it remains uncomplicated, as we talked about in our last video, meaning there's no uncontrolled pain, uh, there's no blockage that is impacting the function of your kidney, it's uncomplicated you can continue expulsive therapy until your kidney stone passes, which it will, because most of them are gonna be under 10 millimeters that are being looked at for expulsive therapy. So American Neurological Association says six weeks, that's what we use, so if it doesn't pass in six weeks, shockwave lithotripsy is going to be recommended as the next step after that expulsive therapy. Now, if you have a kidney stone that is less than 20 millimeters and it's still located in the kidney, however, it is not located at the lower pole, shockwave lithotripsy is an option for you. Now, we haven't covered kidney poles yet, but we will in future videos. But just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, if we envision a kidney, just kind of like, let's just use my head. So we've got upper pole, mid pole, and we got lower pole. And up in the upper, between the upper and the mid, this is where the renal pelvis and your ureter attach. And this is where most stones flow. It's the lower pole kidney stones that give most surgical procedures and expulsive therapy for that matter, trouble because they are down at the bottom and it needs to be circulated, percolated to, in order to get those stone fragments to pass out. So in this particular instance, they say, if you got a stone that's less than 20 millimeters, and as long as it's not in the lower pole of your kidney, shockwave lithotripsy is a go. Now, when it comes to stones that are in the ureter, a uh, stone that may be located at the mid ureter or the distal ureter, which is the lower ureter, and again, just like with poles, there's an upper, mid, and a lower. So when we're talking about mid and lower stones, that require intervention. So this is an instance where something became complicated. Either there's uncontrolled pain that's starting or there's urine blockage, can't urinate, and there is impact to the kidney. Shockwave lithotripsy can be used for ureteral stones that are complicated. So that's another one. But I wanna make note of something here. There are certain stone types that are not 
responsive to shockwave lithotripsy. In particular, calcium oxalate monohydrate. Now, there are two different types of calcium oxalate stones, as you'll recall from our videos. There's a monohydrate, which is really, really dense and hard, and then there is a dihydrate, which is very weak and susceptible to shockwave lithotripsy. So, calcium oxalate monohydrate, no go. Brushite stones, no go, very dense. And then also cysteine stones are added to this list as well because there are two different types. Just like with calcium oxalate, there are two different types of cysteine stones. One is super dense and is one is really weak. But this is why we use CT scans with density information to be able to determine eligibility. So lots of stuff within this selection criteria to be considered, and this is what makes it so confusing. But let's transition over to passage rates and talk about what type of success should we be looking for for our $12,000. <laughs> so a couple things before we jump into the actual figures themselves. One thing to note here, when it comes to shockwave lithotripsy, it is assumed that you're going to need multiple procedures. Based on the number of studies that we looked at when we put together this blog and video, the average was 1.5 to 2 procedures in order to obtain a stone-free status. So, one procedure is not going to get it done. And if you're looking for more information on why, we would encourage you to hop over to our website, stone-relief.com. Check out our education blog section. We did an exhaustive write-up on this particular uh, treatment technique, shockwave lithotripsy. So there is a bevy of information for you to dig into if you're looking to get into the weeds. But nevertheless, so two sessions on average you're going to be looking at. So if we're keeping count here, we got... 12 times 2 is 24, plus the 10 you're already in. So you're already in for about thirty dollars to $34,000 already if we're doing these procedures. So keep that in mind. And let's define what success is for this procedure. So success equals a stone-free status, meaning there's no kidney stones left in your kidney, after 12 weeks. Because this procedure isn't instantaneous. So they run the shock wave for a period of time, and then... Obviously, those stones may or may not be fragmented, but let's say it's your second procedure and they go in there again and they fragmented those stones more. They give you 12 weeks in order to fully pass all those fragments when they combine it with expulsive therapy. So again here, 12 weeks, expulsive therapy, you're going to be passing stones, but this is what is defining when we look at success here. This is what it means. So after 12 weeks, there's no stones left in the kidney. So when we take a look at the success rates here, we are going to be judging this based on location because this is generally how a urologist is going to evaluate shockwave lithotripsy for you. Because again, in order to get into this selection criteria for this procedure, your stone is going to be less than 850, maybe 1,000. And we've met all these other criteria. Otherwise, we shouldn't be doing this. And again, Stone size is less important with this particular treatment option because as long as it meets those criteria, it can be destroyed. So location becomes the more pertinent factor, not size. So when we're taking a look at the kidney, and again, we're looking at poles or calyxes, kind of one of the same thing as far as this is concerned. So we're looking at the upper portion of the kidney. So it's up here. So we've got upper, mid, and we got lower. Not obviously to scale, but just for demonstration purposes. So in the upper portion of the kidney, after, and again, this is number of sessions. This data is pooled for people who are doing one, two, three, four, five different sessions. This is the ultimate end-all data. So upper calyx stones will pass 84.4% of the time. Middle calyx stones or middle pole, 86% of the time, almost 87% of the time. Lower calyx stones, they drop off quite a bit as we had talked about as to why. Um, but this is down at 68.5%. The renal pelvis, um, if you're not familiar with where this is, uh, we have a video on renal colic that will help illustrate that and we'll link a card up there. But in essence, between that upper pole and middle pole and that kidney, this is like the river delta, as you will, you know, as it flows from your kidney into your ureter and then down into your bladder. So if they're in the renal pelvis, success is getting a little bit higher. This is at almost 
And then if they're in the upper ureter, we're looking at about 85% success rate. Now, when we looked at this, this didn't really impress us much. And especially given the price tag for this procedure and the accumulating cost that you're already having to consider, you know, if we'll let's just use two sessions as an average, $24,000 for, let's just call it roughly a 85 to 90% success rate. I gotta be honest with you, I'm, I'm, looking probably more closer to a 99 to 100% success rate if I'm spending $24,000 on a procedure of my hard earned money. And this is where I'd like all of us to just pause for a second. Because while this procedure absolutely has its place for stones that are larger than 10 millimeters, if you have a kidney stone that is less than 10 millimeters, you should be looking at expulsive therapy. Not only does the American Urological Association recommend this, now their period of time that they allow for this is ridiculously short. It needs to be longer, but that's a discussion for another day. But even this body that really kind of dictates what happens in urology in the United States suggests expulsive therapy. And expulsive therapy is a fraction of the cost when compared to $24,000 or even $12,000. Or let's just say that you find it at some discount place for $8,000. If you were to use a product such as Cleanse in a natural expulsive therapy type of a setting, and let's just say that you were using uh, 10 bottles of this product, and that's a lot, okay? At 10 bottles at $40 a bottle, you're looking at a price tag of $400 versus $24,000. And if you recall from the video when we talked about expulsive therapy, the minimum success rate for expulsive therapy was in the 90s. So you have a higher likelihood of success with expulsive therapy at a fraction of the cost if your stone is less than 10 millimeters. So keep that in mind. Wow. Lastly, we will have a one page PDF guide available for you to download that will be incredibly helpful for you when you are considering what procedure to have for your kidney stone. Now, this is not meant to be something where you go in and challenge your urologist. It's meant to be something that can help educate you to have a better conversation with your urologist when they come back to you with a recommendation uh, as far as what they see uh, should be done in terms of a surgical procedure. And then you can then take this guide and use that to say, hey, I see something that's not quite right. Can you help me understand why you're making this recommendation over this recommendation? It is about education and empowering yourself to take control of your health and have a better outlook on what happens with your body when it comes to going to a hospital setting or an ER setting. Because oftentimes we're just hands off the wheel and we're going along for the ride because we think that they, medical professionals know what they're doing. And they oftentimes do, but it doesn't mean that we should just follow and trust blindly. We need to be in the know and this can help you. So one thing I wanna make mention of, this video is being recorded at the end of January for publication at the uh, start of February of 2022. This guide, won't be available for you to download until the end of February when we finish this series of videos. So if you're watching this when it's first published, hang tight. If you're watching this past February of 2022, it's available for download. So if you're interested in it, go to www.stone-relief.com slash pages slash procedures in order to get the guide. So thank you all for watching. Please leave comments and questions down below. Regardless of where you're watching this, we do answer all those questions. And we look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thank you, everyone.